All right, we are, ooh, it's loud. we are going to continue with media availabilities today with driver of the number five Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet, Kyle Larson. If you have a question for Kyle, please raise your hand and we will get a wireless microphone over to you. We'll go up here to Zach. Zach Sterney, NASCAR.com. Kyle, how do, you, how do you expect the car to react here at the road courses? Do you, um, I know Tyler Reddick, I spoke with earlier this week, he said that you can't bring what you brought last year and expect it to, to still do the same thing. Um, are you anticipating the car handling any differently uh, with the package this year than it did a year ago? Um, I, I have no idea. So, yeah, I, I don't really know how to answer that other than, you know, I just assume with another year that the team has gotten, you know, smarter and better about setups that our car is going to be driving better. Just like it did from 22 to 23, it drove better even though we had less downforce, I guess, last year. So, now that we have more downforce, you know, I would hope that the braking zones would be a little bit, uh, you know, more comfortable. I remember last year being really uncomfortable in brake zones, a lot of us were. Um, but then like through the corners, my car handled better. So now I'm hoping that the brake zones will be a little bit more comfortable and then, you know, our car setup will, you'll be good through the corners and stuff too. So um, wishful thinking. So uh, we'll see when we get on track tomorrow. All right, we'll go to Jerry Jordan and then back there. Jerry Jordan, Jerry Jordan, uh, kickoftires.net. So you've got a win under your belt. What is that? The, the, your, your season. I've got what? Under my you've belt? got a. You've got a win, right? A win. Oh, a win under your belt. So your season so far, <laughs> obviously going pretty well. What What is your out, your forecast for some of the upcoming tracks like Richmond? Things. Where are you focusing at as you get ready for you know Indy and other stuff that you've got going on sideways you know, on the on the sidelines? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't. Uh... I never try to look too far out in front, so um, yeah, I mean, I don't even know what race is after Richmond, honestly. Um, so yeah, I mean, these two weeks, I guess, is all I'm really looking at, and I've been looking forward to this one for a while just because, you know, I want to get better here, and, um, and it's the first road course of the year, so it's different, it's fun. Um, you're kind of studying all week and stuff like that is enjoyable. Um, but then, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think just... Uh, you know, we're tied for the point lead right now, so, you know, we've been doing something right. Um, but, yeah, we just like to continue the consistent run, continue getting good stage points at every racetrack, and, um, or at least, you know, having a good shot uh, at the end of the race, too. So, um, yeah, it's just uh, been a goal of mine this year is to you know, try and do a better job throughout the regular season. And I um, know we're only, whatever, five races in, but it's been – going well so far so just got to keep keep it up do you find yourself having a little bit more time to focus on the the indy car indy 500 and, and and things like that have you even thought about that yet i get asked the question every week like what should i be doing <laughs> i don't either <laughs> yeah i don't either i mean I, I i feel like to this point i'm as prepared as i can be you know i'm just to the point now where i need to get on track so we get on track in a few weeks and then, uh, you know, then I'll get to be able to think more about the Indy 500, but I also, you know, don't, I can't take focus off of this because the Cup Series, it's not like this stuff comes easy to me, you know, it, it takes a lot of work. So I also, you have to dedicate a lot of time to this if I want to be, you're doing my team, you know, justice on, on Sundays as well. So, um, I race a lot of stuff, and, and I prepare the same for all of it. So, yeah, Indy's no different. You know, I don't uh, like I, I'm not racing a sprint car for another month, but I'm I'm not I'm not like worried about it right now either. So, I'm worried about like right now. So, um, maybe that'll hurt me when I come to Indy, when it comes to Indy, but I don't think it will. I'm not I'm not changing my process. Eric, Eric Sarita, Game Day Productions. Kyle, uh, the driver's cancel has been in effect for a few years. What are your impressions of how it's evolved? I can't hear, what? It's just the echo, I can't hear well. Sorry, uh, the driver's cancel has been in effect for a few years. Okay. Uh, what are your impressions of how it's evolved? Yeah, um, no, good question. I think um, it's evolved for sure. I, and I think even before the driver cancel was ever like established, you know, I was a part of stuff 
a, some version of the driver's council like probably nine or more years ago. Um, and just to see where it's kind of come from since then, it's been you know, promising. You know, I feel like there's way more open communication, trust amongst everybody, um, all of that. I just, I feel like, you know, we're moving forward together a little bit um, better than we used to. So um, not, not, I mean, it's always been good. Even from its inception, I feel like it's been decent, but uh, I feel like now, you know, there's the trust level between um, everybody, which is, which makes things a little bit nicer. Is there one thing you'd change about how the sport operates? Um, no, I mean, I'm, I'm just a driver, so. Go ahead. Kyle Larson, uh, Wyatt Watson with FrenchRitch.com. Uh, how do you expect to tackle the new resort zone here at Coda? And your thoughts also going back to stage cautions here? Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I think, uh, just got to kind of see how the truck race plays out a little bit, but, um, I imagine, you know, the restart zone being closer to the final corner. Your know, cars will still, like when the leader takes off, the cars will still be kind of stuck going around that corner. So there, I believe, should be less kind of, you know, seven wide into turn one and less dive bombs and crashes and just the, uh, um, you know, craziness, which is good, I think, you know, because even fans last year were like, this is kind of dumb. Right, like we look like amateurs out there. So I think it'll look a little bit more professional. I think you're still gonna have dive bombs for sure, um, but maybe not from four rows back and then just shoving guys through through the two rows in front of you. So um, I, I think you know, it's gonna be good. Uh, I think you're gonna, I think it's gonna be a nice compliment to what drivers wanted, you know, plus what everybody kind of needed as far as, you know, just not crashing people. Let's go to Dustin and then Chris Knight. Dustin Albino, Jayski. Kyle, you mentioned how you're tied for the points to leave the regular season standings with Martin. Um, when do you really begin to start looking at the regular season standings as the regular season winds down? Um, Daytona. <laughs> I, I mean, on, I, I don't know if other people are the same way, but I think if you take your eyes off of it too much, then you can get a little careless, and then you get further behind. So I've always, I've always paid attention to the points every week. Um, and I would say most people probably do as well. So, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's always on your mind, especially when there's playoff points to be given at the end of the regular season. I think that makes you more aware of where you're at in the standings, um, even with the one win that we have and knowing that we're locked in or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, because it's, what, like 15 points, I think, to win the regular season, and it drops five. I mean, that's like a full race win. Um, so... Yeah, it's important to uh, to have the best regular season that you can um, to benefit yourself through the playoffs. You know, in 22 and 23, yes, we were pretty competitive, but, you know, we stumbled a lot in the regular season and didn't finish very high in the regular season points. And then the playoffs were, were difficult, uh, where we were barely kind of squeaking by through some of the rounds. And, um, you know, ultimately at the Roval in 2022, I, you know, missed it by three points where – if I could have just finished a couple spots or a few spots ahead in regular season points, yeah, I would have made it through and been racing in the final four. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, points are always on my mind. Maybe not necessarily, like, during the race, but afterwards. Chris. Chris Knight, CatchWebs.com. Kyle, did you have a chance to see the onboard camera from Bristol last week of yours that was floating around on social media this week? Did it feel like a real-life video game? When you're doing it, and would you be, would you ever want to participate in a race like that again? Um, yes, yeah, so I watched the little, I don't know, three and a half minute clip that I saw on Twitter, and um, honestly, it was crazier for my seat than even like Twitter or the onboard. Like when I watched the onboard, I was like, man, this doesn't look as wild as what it was out of my windshield. Um, it just felt like when I was out, when I left pit road, which I thought, I thought of. I thought I was screwed, right? Like, I was one of the first people to pit. I thought for sure there'd be a caution. I'm like, my race is over. So I'm kind of just like, I didn't even try hard coming to pit road. Didn't even try hard leaving. Went out there. I'm just like driving around people. And 
I was like, man, maybe this is, uh, maybe we're going to get this whole cycle through. And um, it was just wild. Like, I feel like I was passing the same guy, like, every five laps. And uh, it was just, it was nuts. It was, I mean, I would be, like, you know, pass somebody on the bottom, then, like, turn right mid-corner and drive around that guy before exit. It was, it was just weird. It was, it was, like, those like weird dreams that you would have like it wasn't real life so um no that it was it was fun and and don't get me wrong like I think a lot of people got me wrong last week and I didn't probably like show how much fun I had but I, I was always smiling in all my post-race media stuff like I had a blast like I had a great time it was just I think maybe I could have took more time and saying explaining my comments is like I hope I don't ever have to do this again it was more that like you couldn't really manage your stuff. Um, yes, I mean, you could manage it three to seven more laps better, I guess, than some people, but um, it was just too short. They were too short um, of little stints, I guess, you know? So if it was a little less extreme, you, know, you could kind of manage that throughout a little bit longer run, um, I would be all for that. So, um, and two, I think I would love for it to like have you know, laid a little bit of rubber so you could you could kind of move around and still push and pay for it if you needed to because, you know, how it was then was we were just, like, so stuck to the bottom. It was just, um, you know, I hate to nitpick it, but like, it could have been a little bit better. But, uh, no, it was still it was still fun. I, I enjoyed it a lot. So, um, yeah, it was I've, – I've never been in a race like that. I've been in sprint car races like that, but they're, like, 25 – lap races or 30 lap races um that was 500 laps of like rubber down racing where you're just blowing through your tires without even trying so it was uh it was crazy all right that's all the time we have uh thanks for the time and good luck this weekend thanks Great job, driver.